Thank you guys for for uh, being uh, just man, just obeying what uh, what God's put on your heart. And he, He's saying, uh, and tonight we're going to talk about that a little bit about past, right? And that's what I'm going to show you in a minute. Is uh, look at where we were back then. I knew, man. I, you said breakthrough, and you had said some other things, and where we were back then. All right, I got you, God. This is what you want to speak, you know. This is what you want to say, and I got it. So. Um, Man, you know, thank you for uh, for the opportunity. But uh, hey, can you go ahead and throw that that um, there you go? So this is not really my title tonight, blast from the past. But this only word I, I I'm not as good as Brent. Brent can come up with some snappy titles. I mean, he's got some sermons. I'm like, hey, man, why couldn't I think of that? Right? I mean, he always got something, man. I, it's probably always pretty awesome. I'm very jealous. Okay, I'm jealous of how you can how you can just like and and, and his uh, <laughs> just a side note. I'm very simple. Brent was very, uh, very good in his uh, design of his PowerPoint. So uh, mine's really simple. You know, I just, it's pretty easy. Sorry. It's amazing. Thank you. It's so good. Thank you. All right. So um, awesome. So, uh, so man, I just want to, some of you guys know who I am. I'm John. I'm married to Tara uh, Rollins, my son, Dylan. Uh, and so I, I just, um, man, God just really put this on my heart, and so you got to bear with me, okay? Give me about five minutes, okay? And we're, we're going to get to where God really, uh, you know, God's going to work in this, but I believe that, uh, you know, he's going to do some stuff here too. But, uh, uh, you know, I was born in 1973. I am 48 years old, right? And so I am a child of the 80s, okay? I, yeah, thank you. I am. I I'm, can't. I think there's a difference. I can tell people that grew up in the 80s. I know you, you've got some of the same likes. Thank you. You've got some same likes that I do. And so, man, I, I was like, wow, that's 48, grew up in the 80s. Uh, and and, and it's, I'm not even old. I don't know what y'all talking about. But, uh, you know, uh, I was born to Bill and Barbara Richmond. Yep, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was kind of a late comer to the party, you know, so... Yeah, I was about 10 years after everybody else was born. Uh, my mother was 40, okay? And so I have a total different look on life than some of y'all do. So I'm good, all right? Uh, somebody called my mom grandma one time. Your grandma's here to pick you up from school. I'm like, that ain't my grandma. That's my mama. And we about fought, you know, there. So I'm telling you, I, I just, you know, I, I have some differences. I'm a little different, okay? Uh, I have three brothers, uh, two brothers, excuse me, three sisters, um, and, and, and it, don't hold it against me. I grew up in Arkansas, a little town, Charleston over there. Okay. So uh, I grew up over there. Uh, and, um, I graduated there. I joined the guard right out of high school. I have, I have 29 years in this, this, uh, this month. I'm very proud of that. Very, very proud of that. I never thought I'd be in past six years, Brent. Uh, here I am 29 years later. So I'm proud of that. That's part of who I am, right? I got three deployments in my, uh, in my pocket, right? Um, and, and then, you know, my whole life, I pretty much, before uh, 1997, when, uh, when I met Jesus, really, for the first time, and I really asked him into my life, I lived my life my way. I didn't care. I didn't want... I knew who Jesus was, and I knew that he was a real, uh, he was a real person, and that he really loved me, but I didn't want anything of what my mom and dad had, right? Not that they forced anything on me. They didn't do any of that, but I didn't want what they had. I wanted to live life my way, and so I lived that way up to 1997, and that's when God uh, really redefined my life right there, and so, and then, you know, and in 2000, me and Tara got married right here. Brother Keith did the, uh, the, the wedding. I got a picture. I didn't want to put us all in <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to bring that type of, uh, uh, yeah, on us. So we, I didn't do that. <laughs> but um, uh, got two boys, Rylan and Dylan. Dylan's my oldest and, and um, uh, going to college. Uh, Rylan was healed of seizures. Um, and uh, no, I've spoke about that before, but that's part of my past, right? And uh, I youth pastored for about 14 years and all the stuff. And so this is, this is who I am, right? And so I want to go back just real quick here. And, and any of y'all recognize any of these, these toys? Now, so, okay, now let, let me stop here. Some of y'all may have seen these toys, okay? But who has actually got to play with those toys? Amen, hallelujah. Hey, that, that speaking spell, oh, my Lord, that was cutting edge at the time. Let me tell you right now. Wow. Uh, Simon, you know, that was, I hated that thing. I can never win. Stupid little game. Kick it off. Stupid. Um, 
Light bright. Who had one of those? Raise your hand. Yeah. Yes. Now they have a newer version, but I had the old one with the card, the little paper you had to put in, you know, the light was like, I don't know, 150 watts behind it, you know, it, it would like get it so stinking. It's okay. You can laugh. Okay. That's why I said, we're going to laugh a little bit tonight. Awesome thing, but it's really cheesy. I don't know why, but you spend hours just like poking little deals through it. I don't know. Weirdest thing. Weirdest thing. I don't know, but awesome. Whoop. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Is that the next one? Yeah. Who had an Atari at their house? Yes. Yes. I didn't have one. I mean, my mom and dad weren't really into that, but my brother bought one for me, and so it was pretty awesome. I got. He's like, yeah, I bought it, but you can keep it at your house. I'm like, okay, sweet. So I got it. So I uh, played that thing. By the way, uh, I've said this before. Um, at about 12 or so, you're not really an electrician, Billy Shane, just tell you. Not electrician. Didn't really read the instructions. Uh, it wasn't working very good. Plugging in the wall, you know, the little had a little converter box. You know, you plugged in the wall, and it was a little broken. You, know, you could kind of get to come on, and so I cut that off with some scissors. I kind of peeled the wires back, and I kind of shoved it in the uh, outlet. Not a good thing. It smoked and bobbed, and I was like, life flashed before my eyes. I couldn't see for like two, three minutes. Mom's like, what's that smell? Nothing. That's good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, it didn't work after that. It blew, totally blew up. But, hey, I just asked my, uh, but Atari, anybody have a boom box like that? Yeah, I'm telling you. Hey, I had, even had one better. I had one with a removal cassette player on top, dude. It's a portable one. Anybody have that? Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, and that right there is my dream BMX bike, right? I never had it. I had a Diamondback, an old one. But this is a Diamondback Viper, man. This was freestyle BMX, had the laid back seat post. You could, you could take the, uh, you could take the wheel, uh, handlebars and spin them around all the way around 360. It was awesome. I love that bike. It was probably one of the, uh, my awesome things never had. I'm not really hurt. Can you go to the next one? There we go. Who said He-Man? Who's seen that? Yes. Yes, He-Man, master of the universe. Uh, my favorite deal, I got a whole story about that, not going going tonight. Transformers, oh, my goodness. Uh, GoBots, yeah. I didn't, I, hey, listen, I limited to 10 slides, maybe 11. I had to really be picky on what I put on here, okay? Uh, by the way, these are not dolls. These are action figures. So any of y'all... Any of y'all got that in mind? It's okay, all right? I had that same Optimus Prime. I had Battle Cat. I had He-Man. Awesome. Numbers are not mine. Uh, go to the next one. Ooh, anybody know what the one on the left is? Commodore 64, baby. Yes, thank you, Chris. Yeah, he, he still has one, I think. I'm just saying. Uh, he's got two. <laughs> Yeah, first computer I ever got to play on, right? It was uh, uh, awesome. It took the big old, like, 12-inch floppy disk, you know, you had to put it in there. It took forever to play a game, but uh, awesome. Rubik's Cube, anybody play the Rubik's Cube? I, I had one, but I wasn't smart enough to figure it out, so i just take it apart and put it back together. Thank you. Yeah, did you do that? Oh, yeah, I did it. What? <laughs> I took the sticker. It doesn't look as good, but if you take it apart, you put it back together. I was smart enough to take it apart and put it back together, but I couldn't figure out how to make it, you know, get right, right? So it is. Go to the next one. Ooh. Oh, did I put light bright on it twice? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, G.I. Joe. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Whew. Man, I had, I had, we had see some, I had multiple uh, lunch boxes. G.I. Joe was one of them. I had that one. Um, action figures, awesome. I loved, I loved every bit of it. Watched them every day. Go to the next one. Sorry, I'm trying not to take up a lot of time. All right, now here's some movies, uh, excuse me, some, some TV shows, right? The Dukes of Hazard. Yes. Yes. Little D Daisy Duke, I'm just, I don't know. She wasn't that pretty. I don't know uh, at all. Uh, she drove a cool Jeep. I don't know anything else about her. Uh, she may have worked at the Boar's Nest. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Scantily clad. I don't know. Uh, uh, hey, whatever. I know some of y'all like, yay, I was 12 years old when I was watching this. I, younger. I loved it. It was good. Uh, who's the other guys? Bone Luke Duke. Oh, yeah, that's who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> See, some of y'all, it's okay, laugh. Laugh, just chuckle, do something. Okay, go to the next. Oh, Miami Vice, who, who did? Yes, Crockett and Tubbs in the boat. Oh, yeah, man, that was, uh, I had, now let me be honest and frank. I'm John, but let me be frank with you. 
Um, I didn't let mom and dad know I was watching Miami Vice. It didn't really, that wasn't really a, it wasn't a good one. I have some other ones I didn't put on there because, you know, if my mom actually ever went back and watched something, I didn't want her to see this. Um, I'm the best, I'm the youngest, and I'm the best child. So go ahead and go to the next one. Magnum P.I. Now some of, the, some of you ladies, y'all might found his mustache to be semi-attractive. I did not. I liked a car. Okay. Uh, the A-Team, I mean, come on now. That's the only show that I've gone, I've gone back and watched a few of those episodes of the A-Team. Nobody died. Nobody got shot. I mean, there's explosions and guns and going off, but I never seen anybody no blood and guts. I mean, it's like the cleanest blow them up, shoot them uh, you know, TV show ever. But yeah, B.A., you know, that's a, that's a good. You ever get a chance to go back and watch? Okay, the next one. Oh, uh, MacGyver. Yes. He could t- spit in barbed wire. He can make a bomb. I mean, I don't know how he could do it, right? Uh, Dallas. Now, I wasn't a big Dallas fan, but you know who, who shot JR, right? Who all watched that episode, right? You didn't have to even know what Dallas was, but you were going to watch it on Friday night, but you were going to be there. You were going to watch it. And Reading Rainbow. Oh, my gosh. Whew. <laughs> It's in a book, Reading Rainbow. Come on now. That's, that was true education right there on TV, right? All right, go to the next one. All right, so, so this is some of my quirkiness, you know, uh, Star Trek, like the old Star Trek, new Star Trek. I've watched all the, the new movies. Star, I've watched them all. Quantum Leap. Come on, who, who watched Quantum Leap? Anybody? Thank you. Y'all are nerds. Um, just saying, <laughs> you can't find that anywhere, Quantum Leap, okay? Um, I didn't even have time to even tell you what's going on. If you got it, go look it up. The V. Anybody remember that? You remember that? It's like a miniseries. Uh, it was like aliens that took, they were like lizard people, and they take over human bodies and stuff. I don't know. It's really weird. You need to go watch it. I'm just saying it was a miniseries. That's another one. That Mom Dad didn't really, wasn't, you know, it was good, but me watching it, but I did. So, awesome. So, Wild Kingdom. Anybody on Saturday mornings you woke up and watched Wild Kingdom? Yeah, that's good. All right. Now, everybody's always got a little house on their prayer, right? I mean, come on. Oh, my goodness. I've watched every episode of that. Uh, another one of those quirky deals, Doctor Who. Come on, PBS. I watched that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Thank you. All right. Go to the next one. Oh, okay. Last one here. Okay. Uh, I think I've told this on Thursday nights to our men group. Um, I remember getting our first microwave. We was in Lavaca. I was probably in the fourth grade, and the church gave my mom and dad for Christmas a new microwave. We didn't ever have a microwave. But I, I don't think this is it, but I remember the microwave being about three foot long and about two foot tall. Uh, you know, you could turn it on, the lights would go down, you know, and mom's like, don't look in there while it's cooking. I'm like, why? You're gonna, it's going to fry your brain. It's microwaves. I'm like, but it's got a door on it with a window in it. Come on. If they didn't want me looking in there, they wouldn't put a window in the thing, you know? Come on. I'm telling you, my dad, I told him too, I'm sorry. If you heard the story before, dad, laugh again. Uh, my dad was so amazed that he could put a piece of pie in there and ice cream on it. It would make pie hot and not melt the ice cream. Totally amazed. Totally amazed. Like, he's like, you could put ice, you could put pie in there and it won't even, I'm like, I don't know, it's the magic, dad. I don't know what goes on there, but uh, it's totally amazed. But uh, yeah, so um, go to the next one. And that's it, that's not, but tonight, my topic tonight to you and and. Give me just a second. I got you. It's priceless. Priceless. Go to the next, um, next slide there. This is the definition of priceless. So precious that its value cannot be determined. Wow. Wow. Father, I, I ask you just to speak to me, not what I've got so much down, but God, I want to speak. Uh, truth. God, I want to speak what you want us to hear tonight. God, not what I want to say, but what you want to speak to these awesome people tonight. And God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I was getting ready for this the last few weeks, God just really laid this uh, priceless on on my heart. And I want to, and I got one more thing I'm going to pull out here, okay? And so um, I'm a man. But it's okay. I'm going to show you part of my past. And this is who I am. Yes. This is, this is my sock monkey. Its name is EIO. It is 46 years old. 
little lady. I don't remember this. I'm just telling you what I was told by my mom. I was about two and a half. Lady beside us, uh, when uh, beside where we lived, she came over and she gave me this monkey. And she goes, what are you going to name it? And I didn't talk very much back then, okay? Uh, and I said, E-I-O. And then it's like, so it just E-I-O is a name. I guess I can only spell a ver- a vowels or something. I don't know. No constants in there. Uh, but this is E-I-O. And, and, and this... Hold on, let me get her here. See if I can get her to sit. Don't don't fall over. Okay. Ears coming off. Forty six years old. Looks pretty good. It's been restuffed a few times. It's been washed. Tail's been sewed back on. I cherish this monkey. I couldn't find it for a long time. I, I thought we'd lost it. I couldn't. I didn't know where it's at. I called my mom last week. Like mom. Do you happen to know where EIO is at? She goes, yeah, I think I do. I'm like, shoot, yeah, she don't lose anything. And, and yeah, exactly, nothing. She had it, yeah, it's here, and she went and found it. And, but I slept with this monkey every night. I cherished this monkey. At night when I was scared, I wasn't feeling good. Anybody ever have anything like this? Maybe a blanket. Maybe you had a bear. Tommy, on Thursday night, he had a pillow. Yeah. Ryland, don't want to mess with Ryland, but he's got puppy. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. I love this monkey. I, I, I really do. Even with all the, the ear sewn back on and kind of dirty, a little bit smelly now, but... It's okay, it's 46. I cherish this. I could go put it on Facebook Marketplace right now. If Tara and Vicky had a yard sale, nobody would give me $2 for it. You know? But to me, it's priceless. It's priceless. There's no amount of money that you could give me. Now, okay. I fought with this all day, okay? I'm just trying to be really spiritual, but I was like, man, if somebody did offer me like a million dollars, I, I don't know. Just saying. Let me just get that out. But you, buy, you couldn't get it for no five bucks. It's priceless to me. And this week as I was preparing and, and, and studying and God just laid this on my heart that <laughs> you are just like this. You are priceless to him. He gave it all, Travis. For you, for me, you're priceless. All these things we just went through a minute ago, all, the, all my past and I told you who I was, that makes up, that formed who I am, right? That shaped some of the things in my life. But at, so now that's my past, right? But the past doesn't define me. It's when I, in 1997, when I asked Jesus into my heart, that was a defining moment in my life. And some of you tonight, you're worried and you're concerned about your past and you've let your past control you too long. And you think because of your past hurts, your mistakes, everything that you've been through, that Jesus doesn't love you. But I'm here to tell you tonight and to remind some of you, and I'm telling you, some of you may have been saved for 50, 40, 30 plus years, whatever. Some of you may have only been saved for the last six months or a week, but I'm here to tell you tonight that Jesus loves you no matter your past, no matter what you've done tonight. He loves you. And I want everyone in here to understand that it doesn't matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, Jesus loves you. You're so precious to him. Precious, precious, so precious that it is a value that cannot be determined. You are priceless, priceless. Go ahead, that next one. And so as I was getting ready, man, the Holy Spirit took me to a lot of places this week when I was studying about how Jesus loves us and how priceless I am to him. And even though I've screwed up and I did things my own way that I'm still loved by the creator of the universe, I'm still loved by the master who holds my hand through everything, he still loves me. And so he took me to so many places, to, to Peter and to, and to Saul and to James and John. He took me to Adam and Eve, and he took me to Matthew and all these people. It took me to David. All these people had checkered pasts. 
but he still loved him. But yet, this is where he drew me to. Two little verses in Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. And I love, I found this uh, as I was reading some stuff. And this is, it's the vision. So if you, King James, sorry. Uh, But I like this. It really just hones in on on what I want to speak tonight. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a jeweler on the lookout for the finest pearls. When he found a pearl more beautiful and valuable than any jewel he had ever seen, the jeweler sold all that he had and bought that pearl, his pearl of great price. Hmm. That jeweler is Jesus. Hmm. He gave everything. He became from God to man went through everything, ridicule, lies, friends, Peter (laughs) bailing on him at the last minute for you, for me. Because the great price was his death, the sin that he bore on that cross, the blood that he shed for your healing, the resurrection all for you. Because you're his pearl. You're his pearl. Priceless. No value can determine what he has for you. It says in Psalms 139 and 14, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. And then later on in 17, 18 it says, How precious are your thoughts to me, O God. Hmm. How great is the sum of them? If I should count them, they would be more in, num- more in the number than the sand. When I wake, I'm still with you. He loves you. You have great, so great a value. He put everything. He created us. He molded us. And he made you. And so tonight, you are his pearl. Do you know how a pearl is made? It's an oyster, right? And... And this oyster is it, it's sitting there, and all of a sudden it gets a little sand, little little one little kernel, one little sand somehow gets in there, and it begins to irritate the oyster, right? And that oyster don't like it. It doesn't have any way to get it out. So you know what it does? It's called. It begins to put nacre. I think it's what N A C R E. It begins, because it can't get it out, so what does it do? It coats it. It begins to coat it with this knacker, and it begins to coat, and over a period of time, it it tries to take the irritant, and it begins to form this little pearl inside it. And just like that, we sometimes, we got these, you know, we we think we're just, we're, you know, that we, um, that we don't, we don't have anything in common, but tonight, we are so so far more common in com- we have so much in common than we ever begin to believe. Is that inside this little oyster, all of a sudden, because of an irritant, this pearl is made, and that's how this pearl uh, becomes. And so it, is, it, it starts from a one little irritant, one little sand, and it becomes something of great value. And Jesus, and I love this because in all the other places in the Bible, it talks about diamonds and sapphires and, and rubies and all this stuff, but it never says anything about a pearl. Pearl is naturally made, right? All the other ones are made by some other will. It's actually a living being that makes this pearl. And so Jesus used this metaphor, a parable, when he was talking to disciples because he knew that they understood the meaning of a pearl. Because at this time, all these, the Galileans, they knew that Gentiles come looking for pearls of great value. And so he knew when he talked, when he told them and he was telling the story to them and that they would understand that they are the pearl and he is the one that gave everything he had for them. And so tonight, no matter what, you've, what your past is, and I'm getting around here to the last, go to the next one, I think. Um, there's a pearl and um, go to the next one, I think. You are priceless tonight. Just like EIO is priceless to me. You're so priceless to Jesus. Your, he- your, your hang-ups, your habits, the irritants, he still loves you. 
You're his pearl. Tonight, you need to understand tonight that he will go to the ends of the earth for you. Romans 5 and 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Ultimate price, he paid for you and me. Aaron, could you come, please? Just close your eyes tonight. Can you do that? Can we just turn the lights down a little bit, Josh? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time. Thank you for truth. Thank you for your love that you have for each one of us. Father, tonight I know that you had tonight all planned out for us. That, Lord, we needed to hear, not John, what John wanted to say, but we need to hear what you wanted to say to us. And that you love us, you love us, you love us. That we are your priceless pearl. So tonight, eyes closed, head bowed. If you don't know Jesus tonight, and you want to know this man from Galilee that, that can forgive you of your sins and come in and make, make a de, you can make a defining moment in you. He can take you from, from a sinner to a saint. He can begin to transform you and make you into who you have always, who have God always planned you to be. And you don't know him and you want to say, John, that's me tonight. I need to know Jesus. I need to know him. I want to know this man who thinks me is priceless. Is that you tonight? Can you raise your hand? Put it up, put it down real quick. Anybody here tonight? Okay. Now tonight, I'm not going to make a big altar call tonight, but I do in my heart. I want us to come, and I want us to find us a place around the front, wherever you may be. I'd like to see 100%, but I want you to come around the front. I want you to begin to to understand and, and begin to hear the Holy Spirit speak into you, I love you. No matter what you've done this week, no matter what you've done in your past, I love you. And I need, and, and I need more than anything for you to come and, and speak to me tonight, Lord Jesus. So, Come on, can we do that? Can we come around the front? Can we just, just come around and find us a place and, and just spend, man, you know, Brent always says, man, five minutes. Can you spend five minutes around the front? Can you spend five minutes in prayer? Maybe longer, but can you just spend five minutes?